this is sick. Put this to music. I don't think he stepped out either. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen. Football, America's favorite sport. The NFL draws in an estimated 17 million viewers per week, and the Super Bowl has become one of the most popular annual sporting events in the world with over 100 million viewers each year, second only to the UEFA Champions League. But a dark cloud has been over this game for the last several years, the issue of CTE. Despite all the protective gear, tackle football continues to be one of the most dangerous sports in the world with severe injuries. Broken bones, torn ligaments and dislocated joints are all a reality of the sport. But the most important and troubling injuries of all are the head injuries. This is not only occurring at professional level but school football players are also at risk. The issue of concussions and their long-term impact to the well-being of former NFL players has been in the front line of the NFL injuries topic. The NFL has come under fire after it was revealed that the league had been hiding the fact that research shows that playing football may and will probably lead to brain-related diseases. This is due to a condition known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, better known as CTE. CTE is a degenerative brain disease found in athletes, military veterans, and others with a history of repetitive brain trauma. It is caused when a protein called tau forms clumps that slowly spread through the brain, killing brain cells. The condition was discovered by Dr. Bennett Omalu, played by Will Smith in the movie Concussion, and after he analyzed the brain of Pittsburgh Steelers legend Mike Webster. But I've been studying Mike Webster's position. The man in the middle is quite deceptively the most violent position on the field. Football players suffering from CTE experienced memory loss, confusion, impaired judgment, and eventually progressive dementia. Things we do to one another, okay, uh, hell, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just tired and confused right now. The condition is believed to have led many football players to committing suicide, most notably Junior Seiya, who killed himself in 2012 after a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. Though players of other positions have also been found to have CTE, the condition seems to be most prevalent in linebackers. This is not all that surprising, as with every single snap, offensive and defensive linemen are banging heads together trying to get the upper hand. And when I hit him in the face, his head is going back. He's going forward, but all of a sudden his head is going back and his brain is hitting up against the inside of his skull. So, with all that being said, you can pretty much see why the NFL would not want this information in people's minds every time they saw their favorite player get pounded in the head. Unfortunately, it is impossible to treat CTE as it can only be diagnosed post-mortem when the brain is analyzed. To be clear, football players aren't the only ones who get CTE, but the difference is most athletes aren't playing their respective sports with massive helmets over their heads. Hence the question. Why is it helmets do not help in preventing CTE? Truth is, football helmets were never designed to help with concussions. You may be surprised to learn that pretty much the only thing the helmet is meant to prevent is skull fractures. A new study finds that football helmets currently used on the field may do very little to protect against hits to the side of the head, or what is known as rotational force, an often dangerous source of brain injury and encephalopathy. The study found that football helmets on average reduce the risk of traumatic brain injury by only 20% compared to not wearing a helmet. 20%. Brain injuries in football are the result of the brain's rapidly shifting inside the skull due to an impact of violent movement to the head. Helmets do not prevent that movement of the brain and likely never will. In 2010, the brain of linebacker Owen Thomas was examined. Owen Thomas, who had never been diagnosed with a concussion during his entire playing days from the age of 9, committed suicide by hanging. He was only 21 years old. An examination of his brain indicated that he indeed had CTE, which turned the theory that the disease only results from multiple concussions on its head. This finding was extremely controversial because it meant that the likelihood of advanced head trauma was intrinsically embedded in the way football is played itself. The everyday subconcussive hits that a player takes, which don't even register as concussions, are equally 
dangerous. A human being will get concussed at 60 Gs. A common head-to-head -head contact on a football field? 100 Gs. God did not intend for us to play football. So, what do you think? Do you think football is worth the damage it causes? Any ideas on how the game can be made safer? Share your comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Until then, don't forget to subscribe on the button below and to always keep asking why.